Hello, my name is Dan Brucker, and I work for the Metro North Railroad, and I'm here today to welcome you to Grand Central Terminal, the world's largest train terminal. We cover 49 acres in Midtown Manhattan. We have more trains and tracks and track platforms than any other terminal or station in the world. Every day, 750,000 people come through this terminal. And every day, 200,000 are people who are just visiting. I'd like you to be one of our visitors today and show you some of the great things about Grand Central and a great look at some of our history too. New York City, big, diverse, nerve center of the world of finance, mass media, the arts, and well, almost everything. This is not a place given to understatement, quite the opposite in fact. It's remarkable then that one of the city's most beloved buildings is exactly what it purports to be. It's a terminal, it's central, and it is most decidedly grand. It's beloved because it succeeds in every way, operationally, aesthetically, as part of our shared inheritance from those who came before us. Our lives are richer and we may be better people because they built this place. Gateway to a city, gateway to a continent, gateway to a century. This is Grand Central Terminal. While the current Grand Central Terminal opened its doors to the public a hundred years ago, the story of New York's railroad stations really began 42 years before that, with an equally grand building on the same site. Called Grand Central Depot, it rivaled in grandness, and its replacement, Grand Central Station in 1898, heralded the growing interest in rail transport. Hello, I'm Maxine Dunn, and along with Dan Brucker, let me welcome you to Grand Central, an American treasure. Well, when uh, Commodore Vanderbilt gained control of the railroads coming to Manhattan Island, he decided he wanted a terminal for the passenger service of his railroads to Manhattan. And one of those railroads was the New York and Harlem, and in the 1850s, they bought land here at 42nd Street to build a train yard to service their steam engines. So when Vanderbilt gained control after the Civil War, this was a logical place for him to build Grand Central Depot, as it was called. However, many New Yorkers said, why are you building this depot out of town? Because after the Civil War, the population of Manhattan was down below Houston Street. So this was a hike to get up here to Grand Central. However, Vanderbilt had the land and he decided to build here. In many ways, Grand Central Terminal was the third try for a train station at that site. The first depot uh, after following the Civil War was impressive. New York was still finding its strength, still growing uh, and filling out. The second Grand Central Station was a kind of half-hearted attempt to build a grand permanent structure that was only up for a few years, constantly under renovation. What they really needed to do was take advantage of the new technologies, the new engineering, uh, new thoughts about architecture and, and urban circulation, 
and create a station that would be for the ages. It was very self-consciously a monumental work intended to last a long time. 